Hello everyone, uh, my name is Nano and I am a brand designer here at Canva. I've been designing things just for fun pretty much my whole life. I've always been into playing in bands, I like music, I play guitar. So since I was a teenager, I've always volunteered to create any posters or magazine covers or album or logos, anything. So yeah, so I decided to make my passion for, for design my full-time career around five years ago. Now, I work in the design education team here at Canva, helping create educational content for all our users to learn more about anything design related using Canva. So today we will be making over three designs submitted by our Canva community, the Design Circle. Thank you to everyone for sharing your designs. I'm so, so excited to show you how easy it is to design Canva. We'll be focusing on hierarchy in contrast and in balance. And these are the design principles that we will probably be talking about today. The design number one comes from Craig and it's an Instagram post for an upcoming event. Design number two, this uh, design comes from Leorencia and it's a very, very interesting digital banner for an Etsy store. Design number three uh, comes from Yana and it's a congratulations cup. If you would like to attend our future design makeovers live and get a, a chance to ask questions to our design experts, you can sign up now to any of our live events via the design school events. So, okay, these are just some of the design principles that we will be focusing on today. Hierarchy, contrast, and balance. These design principles are essentially the framework that allows us to make design decisions and successfully arrange elements within our design. Hierarchy helps you define the importance and the sequence of elements within your composition. What the viewer should be seeing first and what the viewer should be seeing last. Contrast happens when two or more elements in a composition are different and it's used to generate impact. Uh, they say that opposites attract. So this is a clear, very clear um, example. You can achieve this with color or with size, for example. And lastly, Balanced. Simply put, balance is the distribution of the visual weight of your design. All right, so we are going to move into our first design. It comes from Greg, and it's a social media post for an, an upcoming event. All right, so what I like about this design is the usage of the client's brand colors in the background. It's a very clever way to keep your composition on brand. I also like how creative Craig has gone with uh, distributing all the information about the event across the composition. One more thing that I like about this one is how Craig has used imagery. Like if I going to attend a talk presentation, I want to see the face of the person presenting. I think we can simplify this design a little bit. And I'm going to do so just by showing you how to rearrange a bit the information in groups and by simplifying our background colors, right? So we are gonna go back to our editor and I'm gonna show you this. All right, so this is the Canva file that Craig submitted and this is our Instagram post. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab the information and I'm gonna divide the information that we need because right now it's a little bit all of us. So I'm going to select all these and we are going to rearrange it. So I select command C and I'm going to paste it here. And obviously it's all white because my background is white. So I can change this to the brand color that he used, which is here. All right. So we've got a copy here. Let's turn this way to zero degrees. And now Let's take a look at this. All right, so effective communicators. I think this should be our headline. So that's great up there. Invites you to our Sunday meeting. Well, we have the date down below, so we don't need this line. And then the three series of compelling storytelling with our special guests, um, Mike Garcia. So I think this could be our subheading. So we are gonna take this and put it up here, right? And we are gonna complete this text box with the rest of the copy because he has divided the copy in three lines. So we type here with special guest, Mike Garcia. All right, so 
we can get rid of this now. And here we go. So now I can see that he's been he struggling a little bit to treat the, the copy a little bit. So we are gonna we're gonna align these to the left. So if you select your text box, you can come here to alignment and just align it to the left. And then you can drag it here and create a nice little paragraph in there. Now Effective communicators, I think it should be bigger. So we are going to drop this just by pressing return, the return key. And now we are going to left align it. So we have it here. All right. So what typeface has he used? So that's one Sarah. Extra bold. I think it's a little bit too bold. Let's go to semi bold. That's good. But now these two sections are competing. So let's drop the wedge on this one. Let's see what we have in here. What if we, we just go to Montserrat? Yeah, this is looking much better. All right, so let's bring these up in size. Let's do it, for example, 66. And we are gonna tie up this space between effective and communicators. So we're clicking here, and we're gonna put it in maybe 1.1. Yes, nice. And now this is 39 point, this is 66. I think a good place to start with a subheading is maybe going the half of the point size of our headline. So if this is 66, let's make this 33 and see how it goes. Oh yes. Now you can see that we've been establishing a little bit of hierarchy now. So our eye knows to start reading for effective communication and then continue to the rest of the copy. So I'm liking this already. So let's put this in here. Now we have to work out our secondary information. So we're gonna left align this. Something that I didn't see in here is like, all right, well, I wanna go to this seminar or talk, but I don't know where it is. So I think we should add an address. So we're gonna add here an address. All right, so this is 33 points. And this is 57. So we are going to continue and do our secondary block of information in a not so big way. So we're going to bring it down a little bit. So maybe we can use 33 points in here just to keep it consistent as the top one. And this will act like a mini headline. And now we are going to put our address. So we are going to use this text box and just duplicating it by pressing the option key and then just dragging the text box. So I'm gonna write here for your street name and city. Oops. And then postcode 01234. Great. All right, so now we have to bring this down in point size because this is secondary information. So we don't need it to be that big. All right, this is looking good. We're just gonna leave it right here. I think this is starting to look very strong. Now, let's do something that Craig has done here. I like how he has been using blocks here, right? Like he's a solid block of color here and another solid block of colors in here. So let's add a block of color. So if you go to your design and press the key R, you will have a rectangle. So we are gonna drag this, make it our front color and resize it. Just put it down there. Obviously because our copy is the same color, we are not able to see it, but we are gonna change the color of it. So I can see this and just put it in white. Okay. All right. This is looking good. We're just going to leave it here for now. All right. Now we're going to work on the photography. So I can see that Greg has removed the background, which is great with our very powerful tool that we've got in Canva, the background remover. So we don't need to do that anymore because he has done it but I think he has failed to put it or host him within a photo frame. And I'm gonna show you how to do that because it's very, very cool. So we are gonna copy our subject and 
just so we have a bit of room, I'm just gonna come in here to a, a clean page and I'm gonna drop in. Now, if you go to your elements tab and you type frames, you can select any of these frames. You drag and drop, right? And then you drag your subject and, and drag it into the frame and automatically Canva make it part of the of the frame right living within the frame so that's very cool and i like it but i would like to add maybe a little bit of a cool background to it so let's think about this we're gonna go to the, our elements tab and i'm gonna type gradient i want to see if there's any circle that we can use i think this is cool all right, well, this is editable as well. So what we can do here is we can use one of the secondary colors of the brand. So which was this maroon one. All right. So now we can bring him to the front and resize him a little bit. And that's looking very strong. But now, I think what I would like to do is making him a little bit bigger or taller, like that. And I would like his hair to come out of the circle, right? I think it will look good. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna show you a little trick. We're gonna press the option key, drag him, touch the image from here. We can delete this now. And now we're gonna resize him to the way that he more or less is sitting in there like that. And now we're gonna crop him and we are gonna crop out everything but the part of his head that we really wanna use. We just wanna use that, right? So let's come up here and now let's place it like in a puzzle. We zoom in and we try to match him. We go i think this is looking very good and there we go oh we got it so now his head is digging out of the frame which i really liking it by the way now we can group it so we're gonna lose it and this is looking really good all right so now we have our presenter we copy him and we paste it at the top and we just leave him here because i think he doesn't need to be the focus of our design. He can be something that you see at the end. All right, so now we are, need to place the logo. So we're gonna grab the logo and then press the Command C and Command V in here and paste it. And I think it can live here because it's quite dark, right? And you don't want a dark one, right? So we're gonna host it in this white neutral color, which is actually helping a lot with uh, contrast. So we're just gonna keep the logo here. Um, we are gonna make sure that the padding between the top and the right side is kind of consistent. This is looking great already. I think maybe we should add a website. So let's do the same, let's duplicate this and type www.yourwebsite.com. We're gonna do it even smaller. We're gonna do maybe 18 points. And we maybe, I like always using this little effect, the little spacing. So we're gonna space it. So it sort of matches the right side of CD. There we go. You can see how it spaces up, so like that. And because it's almost like an information that we don't really need, but it's nice to have that, we're gonna change the color so it's not so permanent and you can still see the secondary block. All right, so this is looking great. I think this is pretty much there. The only thing that I will add, dipping further to the block idea that Greg has is maybe adding a little dash on top of effective. So oops, we press R in our keyboard and we're gonna do a little dash. We're gonna do this. Now we are gonna zoom in. We are gonna try to match the weight of, of this headline. I think that's really close. Now we are gonna position this at the middle. You can see the smart guide in there. It matches the middle of the 
of the logo. So I think that's pretty, pretty good. Maybe we can, maybe too, too long, we can tweak it a little bit like that. And I think this is looking very balanced. We have clearly a top section and a bottom section with information. Maybe we can tilt the box. So our eye flows better to our presenter. And this is done. This is basically done. The only thing that maybe we can add is maybe we can tweak the spacing between headline and subheading. A cool little trick that I learned years ago is like if I press R, bring a rectangle there. And we are gonna use the height of our copy, not the X height, but the rest of the left, right? To the baseline. And then we are using this height as a guide to where our secondary copy should be sitting. So we just bring this up. And now if you zoom out, it's looking at very nicely. So I think we are done with the design. Let's jump back into the presentation. So as you can see, we have completed our makeover for this first design. You can see clearly the before and the after. Uh, the concept is, is the same, but the execution is a little bit different. So things that we've worked on this one are, first of all, hierarchy, making sure our eye knows what to read first and what last by organizing your copy into two very distinctive groups, which is also actually helping with the balance of the design. Second one, the alignment. We have made sure that the trimming of our copy is consistent by left aligning everything in here, which is also helping with legibility. And third contrast, we have simplified our color choices by bringing in a neutral color, which is white, which is also helping with the overall contrast and keeping the design on brand as well, because you are using more accents of the brand colors, which is awesome. So that's all for this first one. We're gonna look at our second design. This one comes from Leorencia and it's an Etsy banner for their online shop. I remember someone mentioning earlier on Etsy designer, so this could be very helpful for you. What I like about this design is how Leorencia has taken full advantage of some of my favorite tools in Canva, which are the background remover, which we've seen before, and the photo frames, which we have seen already. We have to think about the end use of this banner, all right? It will be appearing just above all our product listings in our Etsy store. So we may be able to simplify this design a little bit so it clearly conveys what the brand is about. And maybe we can focus on one of the two images. Maybe we can have them a bit bigger so we can see the frames a little bit better. And we can also maybe work on the balance of the logo and the tagline, maybe the contrast. Let's jump into the editor and take a look. Cool, so this is our banner. So the very first thing that I wanna do is grab one of these images. So I am gonna grab her. We're gonna detach the image and bring her copy and paste it in here. So I would really like to use the, the whole photo, right? But our layering here has already taken the background off. So maybe, maybe let's jump into our editors tab and search for an image, all right? If this is your model that your brand has gone and do a whole photo shoot, you can do the same thing with your original photo. But for argument's sake and for this exercise sake, I'm just gonna go and find another photo, all right? So if we go here to our left menu, you can see here that we have pixels and pixels is a stock, uh, stock photography, right? That you can use. You can search for any term and you'll have photos in there that you can use in your designs. If you don't have it, maybe you can click on more and then you can see all the apps that you may have in here, right? Uh, all the possibilities. So just click on pixels. Now let's search for maybe women, smiling, glasses, outdoor. And now we're gonna see if we can find something that suits the style. Mm, very quickly. Let's check this one out. 
all right. She's happy. I like that she has a bit of a retro vibe as well. It's got a nice background to it with that nice cream color. I think we can really use this one. So I'm happy with our choice. Now we're gonna divide our decision into two halves. So we're gonna go to file and make sure that you have your rules on. And now we're gonna drag a ruler to the center of our composition. It should click when it's ready. Oh, there we go. It's done. You know, I cannot move it anymore. That it anchors to that point. So that's the center. So we are gonna locate our talent into the middle. Right, of that. But now obviously we have a little bit of image missing, uh, which is not ideal. So I'm just gonna do a quick fixed, uh, which is not ideal, but I think for, for this exercise we'll do is so we are gonna press the option key and we are gonna duplicate it. And then we're just gonna flip her. So the end of our image match with the beginning of our image here. But obviously now the fence is a, bit, a little bit tilt. So we're gonna tilt the image. And we're going to do the same here. Fix. We've got it. So we are just going to group the whole image. So you select it all and press group. So it stays there. Now, I really like the logo. So let's grab the logo. I'll just paste it in here. I think we may not need, let's see what what Anthea has done in here. Let's ungroup this. Got the logo, and then we've got these little elements. I think we do not need these, these shapes. We can use this beautiful logo. If you wanna search for any particular style for your logos or for your typography or for any, for any execution that you may want to do, you type whatever you want, and then you go into, our window here. And you can see that I already typed vintage, but you can do like classic and you can search terms, right? Or you have also some options in here. So in this case, I wanna type vintage. You can type sans serif or serif or condensed or any, any specific thing that you may want your uh, typography to be. So let's check. This is probably very similar to the one that Laurencia has chosen. Let's flick down and see what else have we got. This brown sugar, I think brown sugar is very nice. Let's type away. Maybe let's have it into two lines so we can make it bigger. And maybe let's put it on white. I think that's looking very good. Let's make sure that this is aligned to the center. Select it all and to the center. Oops, there we go. I think that's looking very nice. I like this typeface because it looks vintage, but it's got a little bit of a modern edge to it, which is very appealing as well, maybe for another um, portion of the market, right? So we're gonna make this a little bit bigger and set it a little bit within this side, this second half of our composition. Now, if I'm checking your Etsy store, I'm seeing your frames and your logos, but if I wanna learn more about you, I don't have anywhere else to go. So maybe it will be a good idea to put a website. So we're gonna type, press the command T and we're gonna go back and type vintage and see if we can find anything that we may like. This by default has gone to Gatwick, but you can probably use whatever else, as long as it's not competing too much with the, with the logo. I'm gonna go with Gatwick and I'm gonna go www.yourwebsite.com. Okay, and I am going to paste it down here. Gonna make it white as well. So we come here to the text color, make it white. Now, I think we are running into a bit of a contrast issue because this is too small. So maybe we can put it within a little frame or something holding it. So if we go to elements, we can go to lines and shapes. Let's see it all. 
Let's see what we have in here. I think maybe we can use this U shape. Let's get rid of this for a second now. Let's move it to 90 degrees. And this could be good to have a little call to action there. So we're gonna, can you see what I'm doing? That's cool, right? And now we need another half so we can close the other end. So kind of like that, minus 90 degrees. We have it there. Now we just have to space it out properly. And I think that's looking very good. Cool. So obviously that's quite a strong color, but I'm not sure where that color has come from. So we're gonna select this color and go to our color palette. And you can see the cat that has already extracted a color palette from our image. And it's using this nice maroon in here. So we're gonna keep it, but the only thing that we're gonna do is probably bring the opacity down. Uh, we're gonna bring the opacity down to maybe 45%. And that's good. And that's already looking very good. Another thing that I may want to add is maybe some social media icons just to make sure that our clients know that we are on social media just in case they wanna check out all the images or whatnot. So we go to elements and type Facebook logo. We have one in there that we can use. Just click in there again. There we go. That's one. And maybe Instagram logo. Instagram logo in there. We can use this one. Go a second one. And maybe just for argument's sake, a Twitter logo. And we've got another one in here. Well, they are all SVGs, so we can change the color of them. So we go and do white because I think it's a very strong color right now against that background. And we can just organize it in here. So the bottom of our composition should be this. So we're going to align this to the baseline of our call to action. And now we're going to rearrange these icons so they look nice and tidy. So you select all of, all of them, go to position, and then tidy up. There we go. So now we got it. So now if we zoom out a little bit, we can clearly see that we have two halves in here, right? We have our talent wearing the glasses, and then we have some secondary information like our copy, our logo, and our, our website, and some links, which is pretty much all, all you need to, to have for our Etsy banner. So let's check out the before and the after. Just before you do that, Nano, we've actually got a few questions. So thank you for your hard work. There's been <laughs> lots of love in the chat on what you've been doing. The first question is, what are the dimensions for the Etsy banner you're working on at the moment? Okay, so if we go up here to resize, we should see it. This is in pixels, so 3,360 by 840, all right? And I'm pretty sure if you go to the Canva, the main page, the home page, you can select a Etsy template. So it's already all done for you. Thank you. Our next question is, how can you flip an image? Are you able to just demonstrate how to do that? Of course. I'm going to grab our model from here and copy her into a fresh, let's, let's create a fresh page in here. There we go. Oh, we just duplicated it. We don't want this. First thing here. Once you select your image, and you can do this with anything really, with any element, may that be photography or any shapes or any illustrations, anything really. So you select and up here you can see flip. All right, so you click in here and you have two ways of flipping an image, which is horizontally or vertically. Okay, so just play around with that. I like that way, obviously we don't on her like that, but you know what I mean. You can you can do that with other shapes. <laughs> so yeah. that's it's that easy. Perfect. Well, hopefully that helps you out, Alicia. The next question is what kind of fonts have you used? So I'm guessing the one for the vintage frames title and the website. 
Yeah, so the way I've gone about selecting my typefaces, so I know this brand uses like, it's quite a uh, focus on the vintage vibe. So I'm just gonna grab this whole thing and I'm gonna show you again, paste it in here and group. And so for example, let's say you have some text in here and then you wanna give it a little bit more character. So you select it and you can go up here to our typefaces section. So Canva has lots and lots and lots of typefaces that you can use for free. And you can also search for certain sort of characteristics that you may want in your typeface. So in this case, what I did is because I know I'm working with a vintage sort of vibe, I just typed in here, vintage. And there's a whole load of uh, typefaces in here that you can use. So the one that I used, it's called brown sugar. Okay, I just resized it and put it over two frames. I just like how delicate it is, but it's still vintage with a little bit of a modern sort of spill to it. So I thought that was very cool, but you can use any other. There are so many beautiful typefaces in here. Does that answer your question? Yes, awesome. Well, I'll let you continue on with the show and we'll come back to the other questions later. So we're gonna go back to our before and after. So this is design number two. So let's, let's recap a little bit on what we've done here. Just think our Etsy store is like our front window of our business, right? So we have to simplify a little bit the number of elements in our design. So our potential clients can focus better on less distracting elements. And this way we have achieved, first of all, a better balance with two clear areas in our design, left with our talent, and right with our logo and some secondary information. Second, we've increased our negative space. Our negative space is this area over here where there's nothing really happening. It's very clear, but it helps driving your eye to the elements that you want them to see, right? So in this case, I want you to see the frames and then just this little bit of information. So that's a very good way to guide people to certain parts of our composition. Third, we help our composition feel more organic by bringing in a little bit of photography and making the photography be part of the background too. And what we've done here is giving it a little bit more of a human touch, by creating these textures and by having the model full bleed, okay? So we are gonna jump now into our third design. Okay, so design number three comes from Jana and it's a congratulations card for soon to be graduates. This is a great composition and there's not a whole load that I can do to improve it. The soon to be graduate lookup, it's very consistent. And as you can see, the, the pattern between the left, the right and the top margins, it's very, very consistent. I love how energetic it is because it's perfect for this very uh, special occasion. And lastly, I love, I love how Jana has been able to get the graduate hat in here, in between the lines, with the little trick that I show you on design number one, right? By cropping certain parts of the element. So what this is doing right here is adding a little bit of depth and, and dimension to our composition, which is great. But one of the things that I would like to play with is maybe increasing the contrast. I think some of our uh, elements in this composition are a little bit too bright and there may be a little bit of flashing happening. So maybe we can take care of that. And maybe the only other thing that I will look at is maybe simplifying the lockup because I can see here the soon, the to be undergraduate, there are three different fonts um, and all of them have different treatment to it. So maybe we can find a way to simplify that so it's not so distracting. So yeah, let's jump into the editor again and, and take a look at this. Okay, so this is our working file. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is duplicate our design because this is a very good starting point. So I'm just gonna press here into duplicate page. Now, don't think we need the stars in here. So for mm -hmm. now, I'm just gonna get rid of these stars select and delete, okay? These elements in here are very cool. So we have them up here. So just for me to 
have a little bit, a little bit of room. I'm just going to delete them for now, but we can grab them from the from the original one. So I'm just going to delete them. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is just that red is a little bit too bright, and if you can see here, the hand skin color is sort of struggling to come through. So if we take care of the background, maybe we can make the illustration pop a little bit. So let's find another fun color. So we select the background and then we go here to our background color. And maybe we can sort of use some sort of light bluish. Oh, there we go. So what we're achieving here is like now our hand has way more contrast. We can still bring that fun by by bringing sort of another elements but for now let's keep it like this and now we're going to take care of this look okay we're going to delete the front of the hat that's the trick that i was telling you about very clever and we're just going to minimize this here first. okay so we have this font which is tech tool which I really like. So we may be able to use that one. So we've got that one. And then to be, it's a different typeface. Maybe let's simplify this, get rid of this one. This one is Gary Osan. Maybe why don't we use the same one as this one, which is TikTok. There we go. There it is. So now we have the same typeface. We are simplifying the trick here. What we are going to do, if you go up here on effects, you can see that in Canva you can apply effects to text. Uh, maybe if they like in the contrast, you can add a little bit of a back shadow, uh, um, a little bit of a drop shadow, sorry, and a little bit of you can curve text, which is very cool and very, very easy. So I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to simplify the whole thing and not have any effects right now. Okay. Not in there and not in here. So I, click on effects and press now. All right. So I really like how this lockup is very straight. It's like a whole block. It's very nice. So we're going to do the same here. We are going to maybe align this to the center, which is it is now. We are going to be aligning our copy to the margin. So let's bring it up on size. All right, that's pretty good. Now, now we have graduate. We're gonna do the same with graduate. We're gonna increase the point size. Uh, it needs a lot, so maybe 320 or something like that. That's a good starting point. And maybe we can, yeah. So it's sort of the same with us, our first line, right? We have it in here. Now we have to take care of the 2B. So, Let's create a little bit of contrast in here. So we are using a very tall and condensed font. Maybe for the to be, we can do something which is the opposite. Okay, something that is not so tall, but and is more open, more wide. So let's see what we can do in here. We're gonna press the T key and we are going to type to be in capital letters. And now, as I said in the previous design, we can go to our all these control panel for our typefaces and we can type something. So we want this to be maybe kind of like a display font, something quite unique that has a lot of character, but don't you want you don't want to over, overdo. So let's see what we can find in here. Oh, lucidity. I think that could be great. So we are going to resize this. And we are creating already a lot of contrast between our, our copy. Use two typefaces and two very different styles, which is very, very cool. So we're going to bring these to be white and these can see it like that. Great. I think we've taken care of our typeface and our lockup. So we're gonna position that to the center. And then we got it. Now we have to work on our illustration. 
Okay, so I think because this was so heavy, and it is something very heavy at the bottom to balance it, but because now we have taken care of that, we can be maybe more playful with our illustrations. So I'm gonna send this to the front to front. There we go. And I am gonna crop the head out. So I come here, press crop. Okay. Something cool that I thought we may be able to do is like, well, this is a class, right? That is graduating. So maybe we can use more hand. We can duplicate them by pressing the option key and then dragging, but maybe to add a little bit of depth, we can have them in different positions and sizes. So we're just gonna bring this down like that, maybe tilt it. So it looks like they are in the ceremony and they're all like throwing their hats. So let's do that. So they are all slightly different sizes. So I really like it. This can even overlap a little bit on the, on the copy which could be very cool like that. All right, now we have to take care of the hats. Um, we are gonna try to do the same as the original design. So we're gonna duplicate this and we're gonna crop out the hands and we're gonna crop in the hats. All right, so we're gonna think about how to balance this and where to put the hat. I think we should put one hat between the O's in here. So maybe we bring this down in size and we have it like that, right? I think that could be very cool. So we send it to the back. We don't want it in front. We're gonna wanna try to come in between the letters. So position backwards. But now what we can do is copy and paste again. And we have it in there. And then we just have the match in the same position if you click on in place right like that and now we just only crop in the place where we want the hat to come through the letters so we're just going to crop this and we're going to focus on this part of the o okay so we just click do like that and then click away and we got it okay that's already adding a lot of depth to it and it's still being really, really fun. So I'm liking it. Maybe we can add a couple more hats. So let's duplicate this. Maybe we can have it like that. Oops, I don't wanna move that. Uh, that's gonna happen a lot. So maybe we can keep that in there. And then another one, maybe we can do it in here, bring it to front. And now we're gonna flip it. So the position is slightly different and you don't realize that it's the same hat. So we're gonna flip it horizontally. We're gonna tilt it like that. And we are maybe gonna add more depth to the composition by making it smaller. And maybe this can be living in between here. And this can be living, you can send this like that, and then we're gonna crop that the same way as we did this one, and that will be all, really. We're gonna select this, copy, have it like that, and then just crop away what we don't need. Where are you crop? Oh, not sure where I came across crop. Hmm, it's interesting. Hmm. Well, I think actually we can leave just like that. Maybe we can just bring it to the back. Yeah, just like that. Maybe bring it down a little bit. But yeah, I think that's all. That's all we need. And then one only thing that I will add is I really like these shapes, but I think the gradient was a little bit too bright. So if we go to our elements tab and type organic shapes, you can see that I've already searched for that. There's a whole bunch of very organic hand-drawn shapes that we can use. We can use one of them. Our composition, or maybe this one. And we can play 
with this, we can maybe make it white, bring the opacity down, just be playful, but being very careful with the contrast and just resize it and paste it whatever you want. And I think that will add the final touches to that funness that the original design had. So we're just gonna have it like that. Then maybe we can have another bit over here. We can over like that, or maybe over here. And then maybe another one over here. And that's all really in needed. I think that's all. I think that's, I'm very happy where we are at now. All right. So we are going to show you the before and the after and talk a, a little bit about what we have done here. What we have done here is created more contrast amongst our elements, okay, through the typefaces that we have chosen and the color combination. Also, we have increased our balance by reorganizing the position of our elements. And lastly, we helped our design be more consistent by simplifying our lookup, reducing the number of fonts that we have used and the effect that we have used. Uh, you can add a little bit of effect to it. Don't go too crazy. I didn't use any effect because I really like it like this, but feel free to experiment. All right, so that's it for the makeover portion of the show. We've got a little bit of time maybe to, to, for you to ask any questions, maybe about the designs that we've been doing or design in general, or maybe about Canva. So please feel free to just type away on the, on the chat box. Yeah, I would just like to give you a huge thank you to Nano for coming on the show today and sharing all <laughs> your amazing design knowledge. It looks wonderful. So thank you. Thank you, Leah. Me. Thank you, Leah. So just coming back to one of the other questions we got before, Lara was wondering if you're able to add a link to your design. Would you be able to talk us through that? Yes, if your design is a digital medium, you will be. Or if you are sharing your working files with for your presentation with someone, you can do it very easily. So I'm going to show you how. I'm just maybe going to go to this, okay? And to this one. So just click on the element that you want to link, okay? So in this case, I want to link, I want to make sure that everything's grouped first. So I'm going to group my books and my, my website. And now if you see in here, you have a few options in here. You have uh, position, uh, grouping, grouping, duplicating, etc. But there is this little one here that says linked. So if you click in here, you can add a link to this design. So if I click on that element, it will literally take me to that link. So as easy as www. Um, Com. or your website or whatever link it is <laughs> I just press press command and now you have it so if I select this I can already see that there is a link in here I click and I just press go to link it's very easy perfect thank you Margareta was wondering if you need any special skills to make a great design I think you just have to have a little bit of a sense of a couple of design principles. Just have an understanding of, you know, what they do in your design, how they affect your design. Like I'm going to explain to you right now, balance, for example, as we say, you know, it's the distribution of our elements in our design. Well, we have applied that in here, right? I'm making it very clear. The good thing about our team, the design education team, is actually we, we create uh, educational content and we have some beautiful resources if you want to learn more about all these design principles. Maybe Leah can link you to the design school page and you can, you can just be, watch so many videos talking about this and it's very, very, very helpful. It's a great resource. But yeah, how about maybe an understanding of the design principles and then just experiment. Experiment, as I got told when I started in Canva, you cannot break Canva, right? So just go wild and experiment. That's all you need to do. Yes, I would definitely recommend checking out our design school if you haven't already. As Mano said, there are plenty of helpful resources on there. I've definitely learned a lot myself. <laughs> Margareta was wondering how you can add a barcode on your design. Oh, I think Margareta got me there. 
<laughs> no, you, oh, um, well, I, I actually know this. So from memory, I think you go to the more tab. We can explore this now. There's definitely a way to do it. Just the three dots, I think the more tab there. And then see the QR code. Nano's got his cursor on it now. And so you simply copy and paste the URL you were wanting to direct people to. And then it will generate a QR code for you to put on your design. So if Nano goes www.canva.com and it should create one for us now. Sorry, I think I thought Margarita was talking about a barcode, like old school barcode. I was like, I don't know that. I mean, but I, oh, I didn't even think. <laughs> true. We got it. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, it's as simple as that. Yeah. And any other app that you may want to use or to link, if you don't see it on your editors tab in here, just click on more and you can see so many other apps that you can link up to your Canva account, okay? And this way you can fully take advantage of your, of your account. And um, yeah, QR code is just very easy. Type where you wanna go, click generate and just paste it in your design. Perfect. Well, I think that wraps up our show for today. And we actually got our submissions for the design makeover from our Canva Design Circle Facebook group. And it is one I would definitely join if you haven't. We've got over 200,000 members now, so it is growing to be quite big. <laughs> and it's a great source of inspiration. You can hear about new feature rollouts and get tips and tricks on your designs. Well, thank you all for joining. I hope you learned something and make sure to stay tuned for future episodes with our extremely talented design team here at Canva. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs>